All right, welcome back to the channel, champs. Today, I'm going to be ranking my PS5 Platinums from best to worst. Uh, I was going to do all of my Platinums, so including like PS3, PS4, Vita, etc. But I realized I've got almost 300 now, so it'd probably take way too long. So for this video, I'm going to try and condense it to just PS5. But let me know down in the comments if you want to see my other lists as well. Okay. Onto the Platinums. Right now, I've got 92 Platinums on my PS5. So let's get to ranking them. You can see on screen, from the top going down, so I've got S tier, which is incredible, almost perfect, A for amazing. Then we've got B, the decent, C, below average, but you know, we can manage. And then D, just straight up trash. Stay away from them. They were crap. They wasn't fun. They wasn't worth it. I just want to say as well, because I've got so many, I'm probably going to be trying to get through them relatively quick. So I won't be going super in detail, just my kind of overview of each game. So first up, we've got Uncharted Legacy of Thieves. From what I remember, this one is both Uncharted 4 and Lost Legacy rolled into one package. It had like a hundred trophies or something. So there was a lot of trophies. It's the usual stuff though. I don't think they changed the trophies from the original Uncharted 4 and Lost Legacy versions. They just kind of squished them together. So it's the usual stuff for Uncharted. Play on the crushing difficulty, grab like all the collectibles, the journals and stuff like that. I really enjoy all the Uncharted games. I really want to go and get the PS4 versions of like Uncharted 4 and stuff because I think I'm pretty close to them. But yeah, 101 trophies is uh, is quite a lot of trophies. Hell of a lot of fun though. Nothing too crazy. I remember you needed to beat the game in like under six hours, I think it was, which is really easy if you just play on the easiest difficulty. You can just speed through it. Overall though, for this, I'd have to just say straight up, this is incredible. There's, there's nothing crazy in there that just makes you feel like, oh my God, this is a grind. You know what I mean? It's just fun all the way through. Difficulty wise, it's a nice balance. It's not too easy, but it's not too hard. So yeah, I'd say first game, incredible. Next, we've got Human Fall Flat. This is one I've just recently platinumed. This is another game that's got over 100 trophies. Uh, obviously, that's not if you want to get the Platinum. That's just all the DLCs, which is pretty cool because all the DLC is actually free as well. So I've got all of the trophies and I had an absolute blast with this game, especially if you're playing with a friend or friends. It's just such a fun game. Sometimes it can get a little bit annoying when you uh, attempt the one of the trophies you need to get from the first level you basically need to complete the whole game in one sitting that sounds kind of crazy it's really not too bad because it's not that long uh, and once you know where you're going and stuff you can get it be even quicker uh, so i'd say that's probably the hardest trophy but it's really there's nothing in this game that is uh, is difficult it's just like i say a really really fun time so we'll throw that one in amazing next up we've got saints row the third another amazing game and another amazing platinum this is a, a pretty straightforward one as for like saints row games go uh, complete all of the activities complete all of the challenges which is probably the hardest and one that takes the longest you don't really need to do anything difficult though there's no difficulty trophies or anything like that so you can just play at your own pace complete challenges as you see fit and just honestly just have a really fun time with this this is another one for me that personally i'm gonna have to throw this in incredible because i absolutely love the Saints Row games. I love the Saints Row franchise. Hopefully it can somehow come back from the disastrous the, um, last Saints Row game that we got. But yeah, I've literally platinum Saints Row the third, I think three times. I think I've got it on PS3, PS4 and PS5. I enjoyed it that much. I've even got all of the DLC trophies as well. So yeah, speaking of that uh, tied in perfectly, I didn't actually intend for that to happen. Saints Row reboot. This was... A massive disappointment, probably one of my most disappointing PS5 releases, I would have to say, at least that I can think of. I expected a lot more from this game. It just turned out to be really bad, especially at launch. It's a lot better now, but at launch it was so glitchy and issues left, right and center. 
issues that sometimes stopped you from playing the game. Uh, and I remember there was one glitch that basically just made it so your character couldn't move. Like, you could not control your character. And then there was another uh, glitch where you could control your character, but you couldn't get in vehicles. And now it's there's workarounds and fixes. It can still happen. But back when it came out, this was a glitch that you could not fix. You just needed to make a new, completely new save. Game breaking bug, issues galore, soulless feeling game, story was trash. Gameplay was okay, but again, just fell... It felt like a Saints Row game without the Saints Row soul, if that makes any sense. Like, if someone, an executive, just said, like, all right, this is what Saints Row's supposed to be, and then just did, like, bulletin points that apparently supposed to be a Saints Row game, trash. Is it technically trash, trash? Probably not, but because it was so disappointing for me, and it probably killed the franchise, yeah, I can't do anything but put it in trash. As for trophies, though, they're not actually that bad. Collectible stuff, uh, grab everything in the open world, complete all the districts, the usual Saints Row open world uh, stuff. Anyway, moving on. The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered. So, I love The Last of Us games, first one and second one. I know the second one can be a bit of a polarizing game, but I absolutely adore both of them they're up there in my like top 10 games of all time so because of that i can't do anything but put it in the incredible tier as for like trophies the really fun trophies for the majority of them the usual stuff collectibles upgrade all of your weapons stuff like that uh, there is New Game Plus as well, so you can go through New Game Plus to finish upgrading weapons. You don't have to play on like a hard difficulty, so if you want, you can just play all the way through on easy, or I think it's called story difficulty on, on that game, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, if you want it to be, it can be super easy, even for, for collectibles, there's accessibility options, which basically highlights any item that's important, so even the collectibles, you could if you wanted, probably to get them pretty easy without a guide using those settings. And then to make it even better, if you do want to up the difficulty a little bit, there's DLC trophies to complete the game on permadeath, which means uh, you can either do it where it's chapter select. So if you die, you have to restart the whole chapter, or you can even do the whole game, where if you die at the end of the game, you'd have to restart the whole thing. And then there's also one for completing the game on the hardest difficulty which is grounded so this one there's a lot of kind of wiggle room there which is pretty cool if you want to make it easy you can if you want to make it hard you can so yeah absolutely incredible game incredible platinum all right up next we've got god of war ragnarok so yeah what can i say about this game that hasn't been said by many other people the game's incredible the w the big issue though i have is i feel like there's a bit too much backtracking towards the end if you want to go for the platinum i feel like there's there's maybe a few too many things that you have to go back and do and you can kind of get lost a little bit trying to find certain things uh, it's not a massive issue but for me personally getting the platinum did drag a little bit towards the end uh, the nice thing with the God of War games is even though you can play on like the easiest difficulty, like you can with most of Sony's exclusives to be fair, even on the ha uh, on the easiest difficulty, sorry, the game can still be quite difficult taking out the Valkyries and stuff. But yeah, we, we all know what to expect from God of War. I'm going to put it personally in amazing. I don't think it's S tier or incredible for me, but uh, it's definitely an amazing game. If you just play the game itself, it's amazing, but some some of the end game stuff kind of dragged you down a little bit for me personally next we've got astro's playroom yeah i mean we don't even need to discuss this if we're all trophy hunters here watching this which we probably are we all know what astro's playroom is it's probably the best game when it comes to like the controller uh, with the vibrations and the sounds and stuff that it makes, it's insane. This is probably the first game most people play as well. It was the first game I played and platinumed on the PS5, and I was so excited about what games could do with a controller, and no game has even come close to doing what Astral's Playroom did with the controller, which is a real shame. But we, uh, we did just get another Astro's game revealed at the state of play, so... That'll be interesting. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, if you're a trophy hunter, you've probably got this one. You should have this one. It's installed on the PS5 from the get-go. The trophy list is amazing. The game is amazing. It's short. It's sweet. It's easy. It's fun. Yeah, go get this one if you haven't got it. 
Astro's Playroom, brother. All right, Resident Evil 4. I am a sucker for Resident Evil games. If you watch my channel, you know I love zombies and I love Resident Evil even more. My favorite franchise of all time, so I'm a little bit biased. Resident Evil 4, absolutely incredible game. Trophy List is also, for me personally, incredible. I, I know some people have issues with uh, having to go through the game again multiple times with, like, you know, not saving the game or saving it a certain amount of times, needing to get, like, S ranks or knife only, uh, speed run, stuff like that. We all know what to expect from Resident Evil Trophy Lists. Like I say, some people don't like that. I personally absolutely love it because it just cha changes the way I play through a game. And uh, yeah, I mean, I can't say enough good things about Resident Evil and Resident Evil 4 and the trophy lists. So going straight into Incredible. I will actually be doing a lot of Resident Evil Platinums very soon because most of my Resident Evil Platinums, I've only done the original versions, which were mostly like PS3. Um, so I'm probably going to be doing a lot of Resident Evil games soon. So yeah, hopefully you'll look forward to that because I know I am. Next, Man Eater. I put this on amazing. I really, really enjoyed my time with this one. It's pretty short. It's about 15 hours from what I remember. I went and did the DLC as well. I actually originally platinumed it on the PS4, but then I think you can mostly auto pop the PS5 version. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much an open world, I guess if you call it that, shark game where you just eat people and eat animals and fight predators. The trophy list is fun. There's uh, a few too many collectibles. But yeah, amazing game. Bug Snacks. I'm going to put this one in decent. Don't think the game's amazing. It's okay. And trophy wise, there's a couple of fun trophies in there. But most of them can get quite tedious towards the end. And some of the bugs that you need to catch can get annoying as well. And you have to catch all of them for some of the trophies. So I'm throwing that one in decent. All right, next up, we've got Stellar Blade. So this is probably one of my most recent ones that I've done a video on at least. I will probably put this one on. I'm gonna go with decent. The only reason I say decent is because I actually thought the game itself was really, really good. Um, and if you just play the game without going for trophies, I'd probably say it's more towards the amazing, but we're ranking it based on trophies as well. So there's just, there's a lot of missable trophies. There's way, way too many collectibles. There's, you need like 400 collectibles or something. In fairness, you do get most of them naturally, but there, there still is a lot of cleanup for collectibles and you can like go past the point of no return and miss them needing a new playthrough, which is definitely not fun. Uh, there's different multiple endings, which I didn't mind just because you can save scum. Some of them, you do still need two playthroughs though. But yeah, for me personally, brings it down with just way too many collectibles. Assassin's Creed Mirage. I feel like this is another decent one. I did really enjoy the game, so I do need to play a lot of the newer ones, but a lot of them just... With open world games at this point, I feel like they're just, they're all so very similar when it comes to like the actual platinums and getting the trophies and stuff. It's like, oh, go just clear everything out, we'll get 100%, which normally just includes like side missions, collectibles, and they're just very, very samey. There's not really much variety when it comes to open world trophies. Not difficult whatsoever. So yeah, that's going in decent. UFC 5. This is another one I'm going to throw in decent. I'd say the game is amazing, even though it's very, very similar to UFC 4. There's really not that much different, to be fair. Kind of expected more from this game. Um, but, you know, it's a UFC game. It's a fighting game. It's really good. I'm an absolute huge fan of UFC and MMA in general. So for me, the game is amazing. The trophy list, however, is just decent. There's a... a Bit of a grind for the online trophy that you need, where you need to prestige your character. It takes about 15 to 20 hours of playing online. Uh, I didn't mind it too much just because, I, like I say, I enjoy the game so much. But playing it all in one go for the video got a little bit tedious, just playing 15 hours of online matches. If I wasn't going for, like, making a video... I probably would have just naturally got that because I, I play them every now and again just in general. So I probably would have spaced that out over months and it wouldn't have felt like like a grind. Um, and there was also one trophy that you needed to wait like a month 
far to even earn it because you needed to wait for a, a pay-per-view event. So again, if you're just playing this naturally, that probably wouldn't be an issue for the average player. But for me, because I was trying to make a video, it was a little bit annoying that I couldn't get the platinum and make a video. So uh, yeah, because of that, we're throwing it in decent. I'm not a fan of, you know, trophies where it's like, oh yeah, I have to wait a month or two to, to actually unlock them. It's super annoying. Not a fan of that whatsoever. All right, sack boy, a big adventure. This game, bro, this game, <laughs> it was so... Right, first off, the game is amazing. It's so much fun. The whole way through, I just love this game. If you just want a fun-ass platformer, this is your go-to game, like, seriously. If you want to play a fun game, this is it. It's got amazing platforming, amazing graphics, and, yeah, overall, just super fun. But there's one trophy that will kick your ass. It kicked my ass, at least. So the Platinum takes about 30-ish hours, according to PSN Profiles. Uh, I've just got it up on the side now, and it's apparently a 5 out of 10 difficulty. For me, not a 5 out of 10 difficulty. Not even close. For me, this was like an 8 or a 9 out of 10 for difficulty. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I'm not great at platformers, and this kicked my ass. For me, it was harder than like Elden Ring. The best thing about it, though, is with Elden Ring or Bloodborne or something like that, it's, it's hard from the beginning to the end. So you've got like 50, 60 hours of difficult gameplay. Whereas Sackboy, it was an 8 or a 9 out of 10 difficulty for me personally, but it was only because of one trophy. So the Platinum was about 30 hours, but only maybe like 5 hours, maybe a bit longer for me to be fair, because I was it was so difficult, was, was actually hard. So because of that, it was difficult, but I enjoyed it, and it was fair for the most part. So I'm going to put Sackboy in in i mean it's amazing or incredible i'm gonna have to put it in incredible because i just loved the game like i enjoyed it so much so yeah i feel pretty confident putting it there i'm gonna throw it in incredible because even the challenge at the end was was fun to do as difficult as it was it was good all right i'm gonna have to start speeding up because i'm taking way too long right phobia saint denis hotel i'm not sure how you pronounce this game it was pretty good it has a couple of missable things from what i remember i was one of the first in the world to actually platinum this game which is pretty cool uh, and i'm a sucker for horror games but honestly if i'm being completely honest it's below average the game is not that great i just enjoy horror games so boom below average spider-man 2 we all know about spider-man and Spider-Man 2, and Miles Morales, with all those trophy hunters, have got every single one of them. I'm going to throw this in amazing, because it is amazing, but it's very by the books. We know what to expect from these kind of Platinums. I'm going to throw it in amazing. All right, next we've got, like, a dragon. Okay, so I still haven't done the newest one, Infinite Wealth. want to get back to that, because I loved what I played of it. And this game, like a dragon... Turn-based, absolutely incredible. I love this game so much. The turn-based combat is amazing. The classes, the systems, all super fun. The side missions, if you played these games, you know the side missions can be completely ridiculous. It's one that does take quite a while. Um, I've got the thingy up here that takes about 80 hours and the difficulty is a 5 out of 10. I think the difficulty is only like that because of one of the towers. I think it's called the Tower Millennium or something. Millennial Tower, one of something like that. That is actually quite difficult and you have to get like max level and stuff to even have a chance of beating that. Um, but like I say, overall, I loved all 80 hours of that game. Next, Harry potter you see this is where certain games if you just play the game right <clears throat> you just play harry potter get the harry potter game it's incredible or it's amazing if i would just play in the game i would probably put it in incredible because the game itself is incredible it's amazing exploring hogwarts is so much fun you can fly around. Who doesn't want an open world Harry Potter game? You can explore the whole castle. It's got secrets. The gameplay is fun. If you're a fan of Harry Potter, it's just 
an incredible game. But this is where it comes in with, because we're ranking it not just on how good the game is, but also how good the platinum is and how good the trophies are. For me, I have to be honest, I had so many issues with collectibles. If anyone's gone for the platinum in this, chances are, especially if you did it more towards the beginning of the game, chances are you had some collectibles glitch out on your art issues. There's way too many collectibles. There's way too many freaking challenge things that you've got to do. These, these little puzzles that you do, there's maybe like five or six different types uh, like Merlin trials and stuff. I can't remember the exact names of them, but there's, there's these little mini game trial things. And one, you do them like one, two, three, four, five times and they're kind of fun, right? But then you realize you've got to do it 10 times, 20 times, 25, 30 times. And you're just like, oh my God, it's the same puzzle over and over and over and over again. And it would have been okay to do it a couple of times, but 20 times? No, bro, there's way too many. There's way too many collectibles, way too many pages that you need to find. There was glitches, there was issues. So, as a game, incredible. If you want to go for the platinum, trash, bro. It's such a shit platinum for me. I, yeah, I would never, ever, ever want to put like platinum that game again so trash the crew motor fest okay now we're gonna go polar opposites incredible fun from the start to the finish you don't even have to do everything in the game which is very rare i feel i pretty much did do everything because i enjoyed the game so much i think you can get the platinum in like 20 hours 15 20 hours i spent about 45 to 50 hours in the game just because i enjoyed the racing so much yeah incredible game incredible trophy list as well there's a lot of trophies in there that are just fun like go to certain areas of the map and do like a donut on the ubisoft logo or in front of a hotel uh drive to the top of like a volcano uh, it's just it's just a really fun game and the trophy list is also just really fun play this one if you haven't played it immortals of avium this one's decent there's nothing crazy the game's okay is super average, the trophy list, super average. You do have to play on the hardest difficulty, but honestly, I think I said it in the video, but the hardest difficulty was that easy. Multiple times while playing, I went to the options to make sure I was actually playing on, playing on the hardest difficulty because it didn't feel like it was on hard. It weren't too bad, but yeah, I throw it in decent. All right, next, Thymesia. I'd say this one is also decent. Nothing too difficult. Uh, well, the, the very final trophy where you have to beat the tutorial boss is, is actually quite a difficult trophy. Easily the hardest trophy in the game. Without that trophy, it would mostly be a cakewalk. To be honest, you do need to do a bit of grinding to uh, max out your levels and stuff. Nothing too crazy, but it's a decent or Souls-like. Next is Evil Inside. Another super generic uh, horror game, nothing much to talk about to be honest. I think I remember getting this platinum in like an hour or two. So Dragon Ball Kakarot, I will throw this in amazing. An open world Dragon Ball game, who doesn't love that? Nothing too crazy trophy wise, took about 40 hours, nothing difficult. One time, Elden Ring. All right, this is, a, the a game is incredible. And I honestly, I feel like the platinum really doesn't hurt this game i think there's one missable trophy from what i remember which is one weapon because an area of the map gets destroyed so the the weapon disappears as long as you get that one weapon though i'm pretty sure there's nothing missable uh there's nothing too grindy there's it's just a really fun game and a fun platinum you do have to get multiple different endings though but you can use the the playstation cloud save to negate having to do more playthroughs so yeah, Elden Ring, incredible game, an incredible platinum. Final Fantasy Rebirth. Now, this was a hot topic for me on, on my channel. I got a lot of comments agreeing with me on the video, and I got a lot of comments disagreeing with me. For me, personally, the game, this is another one like Harry Potter for me. The game itself, incredible. If you're not going for trophies, if you're not going for the platinum, the game is absolutely amazing. The trophies brought this game down so much. It just made the game so frustrating and left me with a sour taste of the game. Um, I can look back on it now and remember like how incredible the game itself is. It might actually be my most 
looking at all my troph my platinums on PS5, I think it's my most difficult PS5 platinum. Yeah, I'd say Rebirth is, is my most difficult platinum so far. Really tough. And really long as well, like 200 hours. I think it took me 180 hours. All right, next we've got this one. Um, I just below average. The game itself is actually quite fun, but uh, I think it's considered one of those easy platinum things. Let me have a look real quick. Uh, yeah, half an hour. So yeah, this is one of those like buy the game for platinum type deals. I don't know if that's why I bought it. I think I just like the look of it because it's old school type of game and, and I really enjoy them. Just unfortunately, it seems they're the easiest games to make. So a lot of games that do it, they just have like half an hour, one hour or two hour platinums, which is a shame. Platinum, below average. The game itself is actually pretty decent. Endlin, I'm going to say below average. The game I enjoyed, but as for going for trophies and stuff, from what I remember, it had a lot of missable trophies, and I think I even missed... So I played through once without not caring, then I needed to go back and redo it for the for the missable collectible stuff, and I actually ended up somehow still missing something while I was looking at a guide, so I had to do a third playthrough. So the game itself is pretty decent, but... As for like trophies, because there's just like so much missable shit. Basically, I have to play through the whole game using a guide. Not really the biggest fan of that sort of stuff. So, yeah, below average. All right, Suicide Squad, another game that was very divisive on my channel when I did it. There were people, again, that agreed and people that didn't agree. For those of you that watch the streams and the video, you know I hated this game. It's absolutely trash. It, this horse has been beat to death. It's a shit game. It's repetitive. It's grindy. It's boring. There's not much content. The story is fucking crap. It, it's just a shit game and a shit platinum. Punch Club 2 incredible uh i've seen that there's dlc coming out so i'm gonna be jumping back into it for that yeah amazing indie game trophies as well just so much fun great game great platinum it takes two i'm gonna have to put that in amazing the last of us part one similar to part two i think they actually made it easier than the original back on like ps3 and the ps4 remaster i think it was they actually made it a lot easier because I think they took away the difficulty trophies. You can use accessibility in, in this version. And they also removed the multiplayer, which trophy wise, okay, I can agree because it probably was the longest part of getting the platinum on the PS3 and PS4 versions. But I really loved the multiplayer. So I would have at least liked to see the multiplayer included in the version, even if it didn't have trophies, just so I could play it. So, Last of Us Part 1 incredible now this one destruction all stars i think it was called this one's not too fresh in my memory because it was one of the first games i think i platinumed on ps5 yeah destruction all stars so this one was a freaking headache the game is really fun but the trophies were so annoying and really difficult as well some of them it's, i'm pretty sure it was only online only game as well so you had to do it against other players real players so it made it super freaking annoying. I'm going to have to say game itself decent for the platinum below average. All right, this one. where I think this one's called Werewolf. I don't remember much about this game, to be honest. Werewolf the Apocalypse. Apparently, it takes about 10 hours and it's a three difficulty. I don't remember it being difficult and I do remember it being quite short. So those probably make sense. Uh, I do remember there were a lot of missable stuff, which I think I did miss. The game itself, really not very good. I'm probably just going to throw it in trash. To be honest, it's just not a very good game and lots of missables. Uh, Alien something or other. What was this game called? Alien. I actually quite kind of enjoyed this game. Grey Hill. Okay, it was nothing to do with Alien. It was Aliens, but it's called The Grey Hill Incident. Uh, missable trophies, short game, clunky game. It's got going below average. I wouldn't say it's trash just because the story intrigues me because it's about aliens. But uh, yeah, not very good. Spirit of the North. I'm going to put this one in decent. Some missables from what I remember. Quite short. Really fun game though. I think it was one of the first videos I actually made on the channel as well. Yeah, pretty good. Stray. Uh, I would say amazing. Really, really fun game. Trophy list was really fun as well. There was one trophy though that I remember being an absolute ball ache. I can't remember the name of it, but... There, were the, there was like a, a chase scene where you had to run and the things, whatever you want to call them, the enemies were like 
jumping on your cat and you needed to make it through the whole section without any of them jumping on you. It felt so RNG, like so random whether it would jump on you or not. Probably took me 50 tries to bloody do it. Other than that though, gotta throw that in. Amazing. Meet your maker. I say this one's decent. I think this was like a release game for PlayStation Plus. Um, it's a first person shooter where people make levels and you play through them and it's just full of traps. I honestly thought it was actually a really good game. Took a while to get the platinum because you need to make your own levels and like people play them and and they die and you like collect materials so you can make your levels harder. Uh, it's kind of hard to, hard to explain, but it was pretty good. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. I'm gonna throw this in amazing. It was uh, another early PS5 game, one where they kind of touted about how fast games can load and stuff, where you're jumping through the portals and it just instantly takes you into a new world and level and it is really freaking cool. The graphics are incredible. The game's super fun, nothing too crazy on there. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna throw that in, amazing. Next, the Dead Space Remake. I'm gonna throw this straight up in incredible. Almost a perfect remake, remaster, whatever you wanna call it. I, I guess you'd call this like a remake. Right, instead of taking stuff away, which for whatever reason remakes like to do that, they like taking stuff away. This one didn't take anything away, but did even add extra stuff that was originally planned to be in the game. So almost a perfect remake, to be honest. Difficulty wise, nothing too crazy on there. Um, I think the hardest trophy you can actually cheese, which makes it a lot easier. Um, I didn't cheese it, but I know, I'm pretty sure you can. I remember reading that you can. Uh, I've got a thing up here, so it's, you got to do three playthroughs. It's going to take about 40 hours, and the difficulty is 4 out of 10. Probably a 6 or a 7 if you don't cheese. Yeah, so you've got impossible mode. You can only save the game in one slot, and as soon as you die, that save slot will delete itself. Amazing game. Robocop Rogue City. I don't think I've done the video at the time of this making this video. I was actually surprised at how good this game was and how good the trophy list was. I really, really enjoyed my time with this. Yeah, I'm going to put it in amazing. It's not difficult or anything like that. It's just really freaking fun, man. Like, it's just a great game. All right, the infamous Skull and Bones. Where do we put this? I mean, it's definitely going towards the bottom. A bit of a grind towards the end for the Jew. Game itself is not great. The story is basically non-existent for the most part. I'm going to put it in below average. I don't think it's trash, but it's really not that great. Like, it's really not a good game. It needs a lot of work. GTA Vice City, the definitive edition. So, I know this game got some hit. Well, not Vice City, but the definitive editions of the GTA games got a bit of flack, rightfully so, especially when they first come out. There was so many issues with them. But honestly, I can't do anything but put GTA Vice City on incredible. I could seriously platinum this game every year and have fun with it every time I play it. I just love GTA Vice City. As soon as I play it, just the music, the, the soundtrack, the game itself, the characters, the location, everything just vibes for me. Like, I just love the game. And even getting the, the platinum, it's the usual GTA stuff, so you kind of know what to expect with, like, rampages, uh, packages, jump, stunt jumps, all the usual stuff that you, you expect from a GTA game. But I just love the game so much. Maybe if you couldn't do the, um, I think when it first came out, there was a trophy that was borderline impossible to get the, like the rating that you needed. There's like a criminal rating and every time you earn money, get kills, blah, 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 do anything in the game, your criminal rating slowly goes up. But when the game first come out, the, the criminal rating requirement was so stupidly high that it was just ridiculous, but then they patched it to make it way, way less. And even though it's way, way less, it still can be a bit of a grind if you don't do like some of the little cheesy tactics that you can do to get it. But yeah, I can't do anything but put it in incredible. Next, we've got The Walking Dead Destinies. Oh my God. I mean, what else can I say other than this game goes in incredible? The trophy list, amazing. The game, amazing. I'm just pulling your leg. I'm just taking the piss. Obviously, it's not going in incredible. It's going in trash. The game is trash. The trophy list is trash. It's just a crap game, missable trophies. And yeah, don't play that one. It's poo.
All right, next we've got, I'm not sure how you pronounce this, what, Anakai, Akai, Akai, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It's, uh, as you can see from the image there, it's a horror game and a pretty short one at that. I think it took me about four-ish hours, five hours to platinum. You can do it in, the guide says like two hours with, with a guide, I'm guessing. Some of the puzzles were quite difficult. That's probably why it took me like four hours. Um, honestly, I thought it was decent. There's nothing crazy. It's just, it's all right. Again, I like horror games. So in reality, it's probably more with like evil inside and phobia. And honestly, them two are probably more in the trash for most people. Anyway, Rogue Company. I'm putting this in amazing. From what I remember, you can probably just get this just naturally playing the game. If you enjoy the game, you'll probably just get the Platinum like I did. There's nothing like too crazy that you got to go out of your way to actually earn this Platinum. And the game is amazing. It's a free to play as well. It's on PS4 and PS5. And if you're looking to, for like a really good third person shooter, give this one a go. Next, we've got one that I just recently Platinumed. Another horror game. It's going to have to go just like all the other horror games below average it's pretty short nothing crazy in there it's got like two or three missable trophies but the hats miss to be fair um it, the game's just yeah it's just meh but i enjoy my horror games next we've got chia so this one i think was another playstation plus game or some kind of tier playstation game this one i would say is decent probably put the game more to maybe higher but the getting the platinum became a little bit tedious at the end having to clear out all the collectibles and so uh yeah i'm gonna put that in decent next we've got last stop this is one i played recently the video's not out yet but i thought this game was amazing to be honest it is only a telltale game where it's basically you know what that entails if you played those games it's more of a story you just a little bit of gameplay moving your character around and selecting what you want to say. But I just really, really enjoyed the story, like way more than I thought I was going to. So because of that, I'm throwing it in. Amazing. Next, Wreckfest. Another one that I'm probably going to throw in. Amazing. It's a really, really fun game. Enjoyed every single minute of, of playing it as well. There is, I think, one or two online trophies. And I know I, most people, including myself, usually don't like online trophies. This one's not too bad. I think it was like win a couple of times or something. Yeah, win 20 events in multiplayer. So, yeah, it's really not too bad. Next, we've got Lake. i throw this one in decent. This is another one that's quite short very simple game you are a like postal delivery driver you basically just listen to stories of the people that you deliver mail to and that's mostly it but it's very chill relaxing and uh it's pretty good all right next we've got a puzzle game i'm not sure how you pronounce this one it's like mcquet mcquetic mcquet i don't freaking know how to pronounce it but the game was pretty fun. It's a puzzle game, like I say, and the trophies were quite interesting. You have to complete the different chapters uh, in certain times. So basically speed run trophies. I'm going to throw this in decent. Atlas Fallen. I'm going to throw this one in decent. It was better than I thought it was going to be, but still not quite anything like amazing. So yeah, pretty good. Decent game. Decent trophy list. Next, we've got Proteus. I'm going to throw this in. I really want to throw it in amazing because the game itself is amazing. But there's a couple of trophies in there that can be a little bit tedious. There's one for killing like a lot of enemies. And even though it wasn't too bad because you can use custom levels. If you didn't use custom levels, that would have took so freaking long. But I used a custom level and it only made took about 45 minutes maybe. But that was 45 minutes of just killing enemies over and over again. That was like stuck in one spot. It's kind of hard to explain. But when I make a video, you guys will see it. And if you platinumed it before, you probably did the same thing. And getting 100% on every level could sometimes be a little bit tedious as well. Uh, if you play through a level to 100% it, you needed to kill like every enemy. Uh, and if you missed even one enemy at some point in the level, you have to redo the level again. So because of that, the game I would put in amazing for a platinum, I'm going to put it in uh, decent. Next, we've got this, is it Fast and Furious Spy Racers? Trash, mate. Took two hours, felt like 50. It's crap, just don't play it. Kena Bridge of Spirits. Right, this one was, this one surprised me. This one took me by surprise. 
because you have to play the game on the hardest difficulty. And if I just bring up a guide, this one, okay, so it says it's a five out of 10. I disagree. This is not a five out of 10. The hardest difficulty on this game was freaking rough. I got my ass whipped. The master difficulty on this game will take you by surprise. Honestly, it's up there with the Souls games like Dark Souls and Elden Ring and Bloodborne difficulty wise. It doesn't look like that though. That's the crazy thing. It looks like a Disney game. Cutscenes, the cinematics look amazing. The graphics are amazing and the game is really good. It's just that one trophy will maybe blindside you like it did with me. It was just way more difficult than, than I thought it was. Very similar to Sackboy where that last trophy just kicked my ass. This was the same. Still, I'm going to throw it in amazing because even with that, that trophy did feel a little bit cheap with some of the boss, the bosses. Next, we've got Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I think this one is. I always get confused which one's which. Fallen Order. Okay. Jedi Survivor is the new one. I think I haven't played that one. I'm going to throw this in decent, I think. The game probably amazing but for me personally the trophy list really brought it down because you needed to get all the collectibles and the map in this game is so shit it's so freaking confusing i don't know what level i'm on what floor i'm on where i am how do i how do I, i'm like how do i get to that area over there i can see it on the map but how do i get over there i don't know because the in-game map is shit so because of the in-game map being crap and it being freaking annoying to get the collectibles going in decent because of that call of the sea another short one that's mostly it's kind of a walking simulator puzzle game decent i'd say pretty good the artful escape i'm gonna say this one was amazing i think i did it in my five games 24 hours video maybe if you haven't played this game I definitely recommend trying it. The music's really good. It's super colorful and just, it's just a really fun time. Hunter's Arena. So there's no guide for this one. But what I do remember is it was, it wasn't super difficult, but it wasn't easy either. I really, really enjoyed the game. And I think it takes quite a while to platinum. Uh, because it's got no guide on there, I can't say what the average is on PSN profiles. Um, I can only go off what I remember, and because it was in 2021, I don't remember how long it took. I just remember it did take a while, but it was really good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to throw it in amazing. I had a really good time with this, and I played it at launch. So I was like, I think I was in like top 15 in the world when I was playing it, which is kind of crazy. Next, we've got Madison. This is another horror game. I'm probably gonna have to throw this one in decent. It's pretty short. Guide says 2 out of 10 difficulty and 25 hours. Sounds about right. It's probably one of the better horror games though, if I'm being honest. It was pretty good. Daymare 1994 Sandcastle. This one took me by surprise. Like, really took me by surprise. Because I played Daymare 1996, I think it was, or 98. Which was the first game. This is a prequel. I think that was on PS4 and it really wasn't very good. This one, however, I'm probably going to throw it in amazing. I have a little bias. I have to keep saying it. I have a little bit of a bias because it's a horror game. It's got zombies. It's a lot like Resident Evil, but honestly, it really surprised me. After playing the first one and it being shit, this one is genuinely amazing. It's so much better than the first one and it's, it's honestly just a really good horror game. Like the trophies are good. Yeah, you have to play on the hardest difficulty from what I remember, but it's really not that difficult. Yeah, so I'm just looking. There's no there's no guide for it, but yeah, finish the game on the hardest difficulty, hardcore mode. You've got to finish the game with an S rank, which from what I remember was like under six hours. I might be wrong. I think it was like five or six hours. Um, and then finish the game as well without dying, which it's not a long one though. It's not like Resident Evil 4 where you need like a million playthroughs, but you do still need a few playthroughs. So yeah, really, really fun game. Definitely recommend Daymare Night Night 4 if you're into horror games. Speaking of, we've got Resident Evil 3, the, uh, the remake. This one, it's not as good as Resident Evil 2 remake, mostly because they just removed quite a f which i was really annoyed at they removed quite a lot of areas and things from the original um in the original you could do like different choices as well like you could go down different paths and stuff in the original they got rid of that so it, it's definitely a shame that they got rid of that stuff 
The game itself, though, like gameplay wise, is just like two. Trophy list, amazing. I'm going to have to put it in incredible. It's not quite as good as Resident Evil 2 Remake, but it's still incredible. Could they have done more with it? Yeah. And it is on the short side, but I still really freaking loved my time with the game. So, Little Nightmares 2. From what I remember, this one was quite short and actually quite easy. Um, I think the first Little Nightmares is considered quite difficult. The second one, though, is a, a lot easier. Couple of collectibles, couple of things here and there. Just a really amazing horror game. Uh, horror platformer. And yeah, I'm putting it in amazing. Super Pets League Justice of Their Own or whatever the hell this game's called. Took like f a few hours, but felt like 50. Just like the other one, the, the Spy Racers one. It's shit, trash. Don't play it. It's poop. DKO, I'd say it's all right. It's decent. It's pretty easy platinum. It's not doesn't take too long. You can also auto pop like the PS4 version if you do the PS5 version first, which is usually the other way around, which is nice. So uh, yeah, it's not really much to say about that one. It's decent. If you enjoy fighters, maybe give it a look. I am dead. I would say this is decent. One I recently played because I think it was leaving like PlayStation Extra. It's a it's a cool story. So we've got a Plague Tale Innocence. I'm going to put this one in. Honestly, I'm probably going to have to put it in Amazing. Even though it does have some missable stuff, the game is really good. Unpacking, short, sweet, super fun, as the name suggests, unpacking. It's a very old school type looking game. As you're unpacking, you're getting this story. A girl from being young and growing up, getting her own place, having her own kid, and even though the it doesn't tell you that's the story, because you're unpacking this character's stuff every time she moves, uh, that's kind of how the story goes. It's really, really good. I definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't already. So now we've got Armored Core, Fires of Rubicon. I had a lot of fun with this game. Quite difficult though, as you probably would expect. There's a lot of missable trophies and you have to do a lot of playthroughs you having to follow a guide quite closely i'm, I'm kind of I'm torn with this one i don't know if i want to put it in amazing or if i want to put it in decent just because of like the missable stuff and having to follow a guide so closely it's going in amazing next we've got tales of iron this one was another shark game i think i'm missing one like dlc trophy so it's rated at a six out of ten difficult it takes about 15 hours it's Pretty much a 2D Souls game, if that makes any sense, really, I guess. You got the dodge mechanics, you got the cool boss fights, the stages, stuff like that. But yeah, I'd say this is amazing. It's just a really, really good game. All right, so next we've got Resident Evil 2 Remake. So you can probably guess where this one's going to go. Since a moment ago, I spoke about how it's basically Resident Evil 3, but it's, it's better. The trophy list is better. The game itself is better. You have to do, there's like trophies for, I remember one of them was like completing the game within a certain amount of steps. So you have to like really carefully plan your route through the whole game and you, you really need to know what you're doing and where you're going. And again, maybe bias. I love the, the kind of trophies that they put in the Resident Evil games. I love the game. I'm putting it in incredible. Next, we've got, I think this was Call of Duty Cold War, is, it? is that what this one is? Yes, Cold War. So, this one I remember took quite a while and wasn't easy. There was some difficulty to this one. So, yeah, I've got the thing here. So, 7 out of 10 difficulty according to the guide and 70 hours to platinum. So, yeah, long and can be quite difficult. So, obviously, the usual stuff, you play on Veteran for the campaign. I don't remember the campaign being too difficult on Veteran, but, yeah, 70 hours, so there's a lot to it. you got the Zombies mode, you got the campaign, you got the Dead Ops. Then you've also got, I think you needed to play a decent amount of multiplayer as well in this one, so... I personally thought this was an amazing game. It was really fun. The online was good. The Zombies, I know the Zombies community, I'm pretty sure didn't like the Zombies for this, but I really enjoyed it because it was open world, it was more casual. Um... And it didn't do like what some of the other zombies modes do where you have to do stupid freaking Easter eggs that the requirements are ridiculous. It's hard and you have to do so many stupid things, which I'm going to have to do soon because I want to play through and get all the Call of Duty Platinum. So I'm going to have to go and do some of the freaking Easter eggs for some of the other games. But this one, yeah, not too bad. Next, I've got 
Operation Tango. So this is a co-op game where you can play as either the male or the female character. The only way to play it is in co-op and you both have your own screen. Basically, you, you do puzzles and you don't see your friend's screen. So they have to communicate and relay what they see to you so you can figure the puzzles out. Honestly, it's really, really unique. I don't know if I've really played another game quite like it. You can normally see the other person's screen, but on this one you can't. So because of that, it is unique. And I wish more co-op games came out that were like this game. T I'm tempted to put it on Incredible, but I feel like that's going a bit too far. But if you if you do really want a, a good puzzle co-op game, highly, highly recommend this game. It's really, really good. Ghostwire Tokyo. You see, this is another one of those games where if I was rating it based on just the game, I would say amazing, but collectibles, bro. It's always collectibles with these games. Way, way, way too many collectibles. A ridiculous. And uh, yeah, so no difficulty trophy, but I do also remember there was, there was another trophy which reminds me, I'm gonna put it below average because of this actually. There's a trophy, let's see if I can find it, but the, the, basically there was a trophy where there's this little box in the game and you can open it for a bit of money and you get like a random perk that lasts for a couple of minutes. And I'm not joking, I sat there trying to like open this little stupid box where you do a little animation. You have to like go away and come back every time you want to retry. And I'm, I'm not even exaggerating. I was probably sat here with this box. It's completely RNG. I wouldn't be surprised if the percentage of getting this perk that you need for the trophy is like 1%. I would not be surprised in the slightest. All right, we've got Modern Warfare 2. This is probably one of the easier, possibly even easiest Call of Duty games to actually uh, get the Platinum. The hard difficulty on this game is not hard. Um, it's really short. There's no like multiplayer trophies. There's no side mode like zombies or anything like that. It's literally just complete the campaign on veteran, which like I say is really not that difficult. And uh, a couple of miscellaneous stuff as, as you usually get with the Call of Duty games. So honestly, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to put it in, in amazing. The trophy list is not egregious and annoying and i'm so yeah i'd say amazing destiny 2 so this one's kind of hard to fully comment on because i actually just auto popped the ps5 version so obviously i originally got it on ps4 but it was so so long ago pretty sure you have to do like the raid i'm gonna get a guide up so i can kind of help myself a little bit okay so apparently the destiny 2 platinum takes 200 hours okay i did not know it took 200 hours but it makes sense though because i played probably i've probably played about 500 hours of destiny 2 at this point if not more than that difficulty says is a, a six very dependent on your team and squad i guess for that one i don't know how accurate that is now maybe it was accurate when destiny 2 first come out but it's had so many updates and so many changes and possibly isn't even close to 200 hours anymore. I, I couldn't honestly say. I'm going to say, honestly, Destiny 2, incredible. How can I not put it in incredible? I played like 500 hours, you know? Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. So this one was actually kind of surprising because I enjoyed it way more than I thought it was going to be. And honestly, I feel like Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is a better game than Borderlands 3. I think it is actually a much better better game platinum does let it down though i would honestly maybe put it in incredible if it weren't for some of the trophies because i do really enjoy this game right so yeah i was just looking online so the the mode that i was talking about is called the chaos mode you have to get that mode up to level 20 like i said you have to keep redoing it and working your way up which did get quite tedious and then the other trophy i was referring to is mule character which is for purchasing every inventory upgrade so if you want to speed this up there is actually like a, a duplication glitch exploit that you can do to get money uh like a lot faster because of that trophy i'm gonna put it in amazing next terminator resistance i'm gonna put this in decent it's quite short it's not difficult 
It's a, it's a pretty good game. It's a lot better than the other Resistance game. Still nothing crazy though, so that's going in decent. Then we've got Resident Evil Village. So you might be able to guess where I'm going to put this one. Uh, yeah, incredible. Surprise, surprise. Uh, the hardest thing is probably the, the Mercenaries mode, which if I remember right, they've actually made Mercenaries mode way, way easier than it used to be at launch the mercenaries mode was actually quite hard but they've made it a lot easier and there's dlc characters as well which you can get which are super overpowered which makes it even easier so uh yeah it's going in incredible next we've got final fantasy remake so i would honestly say the game isn't as good as rebirth but it's a better platinum You've still got to play through the game on the hard difficulty. You've still got to do the Chadley challenges, but Remake only takes about 60, 70 hours, whereas Rebirth is like close to 200 as we discussed. So I'm going to throw this one in incredible because it's honestly just not bad. The hardest thing in this one is probably the squat challenge that you need to do as Cloud. Next, we've got Watch Dogs Legion. I'm going to say this one's probably in the decent it's nowhere near as good as Watch Dogs 2. It is pretty good, but compared to Watch Dogs 2, that's I feel like that's where it was at its peak. Uh, I did like the character thing in, in Legion, though. So, yeah, I felt, this, I felt like this one was pretty good. No missable stuff. So, I'm going to throw it in decent. Next, we've got Ghosts of Tsushima. So, this one, I feel like most people would probably put this in incredible. And I'm tempted to. The game is incredible. I absolutely love the game. The story is amazing. The visuals are amazing. The gameplay is amazing. But for me personally, even though I would probably put it in incredible, I'm going to have to put it down to amazing. I do feel as, as amazing as the game is, and it's not the it's definitely not the worst when it comes to collectibles, but there is a few too many collectibles, I feel, that kind of brought it down towards the end and did make my final, like, five to ten-ish hours a bit of a chore to, to grab them all. Um, and that's coming from someone who most does most of the collectibles as they play through the game, but there was still a decent amount that I needed to do. So, yeah, because of that, we're going in amazing. Fallout 4. Um, I got it on the Platinum on the PS5 version, which is the newer version. The problem is stupid amount of glitches. Like, I just couldn't join the Brotherhood for so long. And the, I had to search online for ages trying to figure out how to fix it. So because of that, the game, I would say, is probably in the amazing. But because of the trophy list and how tedious it can be and the issues I had with the game, I'm going to throw it in decent. All right, next I have, I think this one's Outriders. Guide says, about 40 hours, not too difficult. Sounds about right to me. Really, really enjoyed this game. It was, uh, it's like a Souls-like third-person shooter. Really good, very similar to Remnant. I don't know if I like this more or Remnant more. They're both quite similar, but both really good. Uh, I do want to go back, though, and play the DLCs for both Outriders and Remnant. So I probably will go back to this at some point. But yeah, really, really good co-op game. If you want to play a co-op game, definitely can recommend this if you're into third-person shooters. So because of that, nothing crazy trophy-wise that makes it, like, super tedious or horrible. So I'm going to put I'm going to put it in uh, amazing. I really enjoyed Outriders. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. We got another Resident Evil game. You probably know again where this one is going. It's going in incredible. This was uh, I think this one was a bit on the the more shorter side than some of the others this kind of reignited the fire in resident evil for me um after the pretty good five and then not so great six seven come out in first person wasn't really too sure how how it would go the usual stuff though multiple playthroughs complete the game in under four hours use the item box only three times max and also three first aid sprays as well. There's a trophy for that. So fun trophies as well to go for for multiple playthroughs. Brilliant game. Brilliant trophy list. Incredible. Then we have Final Fantasy 16. So I really enjoyed this game. But I, f I feel like I'm in the minority. But I actually liked 
Final Fantasy 15 more than 16. Want to put it in amazing. It's close to incredible, but I think I'm going to throw it in amazing. I remember the grind towards the max level was a little bit tedious towards the end. I remember I was just in some field running backwards and forwards respawning. Um, like a set of enemies for like an hour. It's not difficult, but like most Final Fantasy games, it's going to take a while. Guide has it at like an average of 75 hours. Sounds about right. So let's move on to ooh, Dead Island 2. So this one's really surprised me because the game was delayed so many times. And when a game gets delayed this many times, there's usually a reason. And that reason is usually because it's shit. And then when it does finally come out, it's normally still pretty shit and not only was it delayed a lot but to make it worse it was like flipped between development teams like three or four times or something which also is a really bad sign fortunately though the game is amazing is it incredible i don't know i don't know if it's incredible but it is really really good and it is a, an amazing game the trophy list is also really fun no missable stuff um yeah, nothing wrong with the trophies. So I'm going to, although I did, I remember I did have trouble with maybe like two of them. There's one way you need to like stealthily take down a certain enemy before it like transforms. I found that one to be quite difficult. And then there was one way you need to throw a weapon really far and kill an enemy. And it sounds like that should be pretty easy. But for whatever reason, it took me like an hour if not longer to actually do the move that one was not fun trying to do that one trophy but the rest of it amazing remnant 2 i'm gonna put this in decent here's why the game amazing the trophy list decent if you play the game now and you play it with the dlc i would probably put it in amazing um so i just look in now so the two trophies i'm referring to a scrap hoarder for acquiring a hundred thousand scrap it takes quite a while and then the other one is for acquiring 20 traits, which doesn't sound too bad, but I just like, I had an issue finding some of the traits. And the reason I say you'd probably still leave it in, I'd put it in amazing with DLC, is because if it's anything like Remnant 1's DLC, the DLC will come with new traits. So that obviously increases the amount of traits in the game. So you, that would make it a lot easier. And then obviously the grind for the scrap would again be less tedious if you've got DLC to also play through. So if you're playing it with DLC, I'd probably, I probably would have left it in amazing, but I didn't. So I'm throwing it in decent. Next, I've got Power Wash Simulator. So this game can get quite boring, as you might imagine. Some of the levels do take a little bit too long. I remember like one of the last levels where it's a pyramid, I think it was, took probably took me about four hours, five hours just to clean the pyramid. It was super, super tedious, that, that one. The, the more shorter ones, though, are a lot more fun, like the garden level and the cleaning houses and vehicles and stuff like that, where you can complete the level in like 20 minutes, half an hour. Even like a level that takes an hour is okay. But once you start going over an hour and it starts taking two hours, three hours, it became a little bit tedious. But I did honestly really, really enjoy myself like playing it, as crazy as that sounds, because I just threw on some music or a podcast and I I just sit down, chill out, relax and clean some shit you know you know it's not amazing but it was relaxing it was decent next we've got wulong wulong wolong not sure how you pronounce it fallen dynasty the it's a souls like set in the uh, the three kingdoms era so kind of like the dynasty warriors game so automatically that was way cooler for me because it was set in the three kingdoms and i love the dynasty warriors series it's nothing like dynasty warriors though gameplay wise like i say it's more of a souls like and I really, really enjoyed this game. It was super, super fun. Bit of a challenge, but nothing too crazy. There's no guide on PSN profiles, so I can't tell you how long it took me. I do remember it not being too bad, and there were a few missable trophies. So I'm going to throw it in amazing. Then we got Immortals, Phoenix Rising. This one, I'm probably going to throw in decent. It's a pretty good game, especially when it comes to like Ubisoft open world games. They can be quite tedious this one really wasn't bad there's probably a few too many stuff that you need to do in the open world but 
like I say, comparing it to some of the other stuff, it's really not that bad. And the game itself is actually really fun. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure they cancelled the, the sequel, which is a shame because I feel like there was a lot of room for improvement. And it, I'm going to throw it in decent. And now the final game on the list. I've been going for over an hour at this point, so hopefully I can massively cut down this video because we definitely don't want it being over an hour i'm pretty good at waffling on we've got godfall this was one of the earliest platinums i got uh the game is probably decent at best it looks good but the game itself is just really not that good if you looked at gameplay you're probably like oh yeah that does look really nice but it's quite shallow the gameplay and combat uh, it does also overstay its welcome. The guide I've got up here says about 40 hours. It does feel like that 40 hours is is too long. It doesn't really hold your attention for 40 hours. 20 hours maybe. Yeah, really nothing great about this game. Super generic. Trophy list is also quite generic. I think it's a little bit easier to platinum now than it was at first. There was a trophy. Yeah, so Ascendant trophy. You need to reach trial level 20 in the trial like tower thing. This one was actually quite difficult at launch, but they've rebalanced the tower to make it a lot easier. So it's really not too bad now like it used to be. And if you're playing co-op, it's even easier. I'm going to throw it in decent. It's probably not even decent to be fair. It's probably below average, to be honest. The game itself is, is really not that good. The trophy list doesn't bring it down or anything, but it's just not that great of a game. But uh, yeah, there it is. That is my tier list. Might be some surprising ones on there that maybe you think some of them are too high. Maybe you think some of them are too low. Like I say, there's certain games where if I just played the game like Ghostwire, like Harry Potter, I probably would have put it much higher up. But because I'm going for the Platinum it can bring them down, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, that is my tier list for all of my 92 PS5 Platinums. Let me know again down in the comments if you want to see my tier list for PS3 and PS4. For now, though, I've been Mr. Leaning. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you all on the next video.